I'm your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. If you take gravels from a beach and shape them in a transparent container, maybe a glass jar, if you rock the glass jar, rock it and rock it for some time, you will see that the big stones, pebbles, will stay on top and the smaller ones will stay below. Turn the, the, the container upside down and rock it again. You will see that the smaller stones will gradually go to the bottom and the, they will push the bigger stones up. That thing is something I first read in one of um, Chief Obafemi Awolowo's books in 1978. And I experimented and it surprised me. I was thinking that the bigger pebbles with uh, heavier ma mass will sink downwards while the smaller ones will come up. But turn it upside down anyhow. The small ones will go down, the big ones will come up. Now, if you take all the money in the world and share it equally, somebody said that in 10 years, the rich will get richer and the poor will get poorer. They will carry the money and give to the rich again because the rich know how to get rich. In my course of mentoring people and being a pastor, I found out that there's a limit to which you can help people. A lot of so-called uh, warfare prayers and prophetic utterances, it's a bloody waste of time. Be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. Jealously guard your heart, out of it spring the issues of life. Our attitude will determine our altitude, ultimately. And so, what do you need to develop to become great? Number one, very early in life, or at any time in life, start to develop your capacity to do anything and to do it well. Capacity is how much volume, how much quantity, how much you can do within a specific time. If you can't do much, you can't go far. The Bible says, because the man, the, the servant was able to handle a little and get much out of it, that he should come and manage great wealth. And that he who has been given little, if he cannot increase it, the little he has will be taken away from him and be given to others who have managed their own well. Said, and he gave them according to their abilities. Life will give you according to your capacity, according to your ability to manage. Once that rule is broken, it leads to underdevelopment as it is in many African countries where incompetent people take over leadership and management of men and materials. If you go to Kigali, the rate of development in Kigali is because of the capacity that Paul Kagame has and his recruitment of capable people into his cabinet. So if you don't have capacity, you can't go far. Peter's law will eventually catch up with you. If you are promoted to a certain height, you will fall back to where you are supposed to be. That's what we have experienced in the last eight years in Nigeria. So capacity. I found out that intellectual capacity, physical capacity, mental capacity, spiritual capacity is very essential or are very essential for advancement and growth. The next thing is competence. The lot you can handle to which degree of efficiency do you handle them? I found that in the Niger Delta here where I reside, a lot of young men and women have desires to become great, but they are very, very inefficient, very, very incompetent, very, very untrustworthy. They can't keep to time, they can't keep appointments, they can't manage opportunities well. A lot of them, if you give them responsibilities, they will mess up, including those who have gone to university. So competence. Now the next thing is courage. 
One of the things that helped me was that the fear of poverty, the hatred for the background I come from, made me not to fear to fail, made me not to fear to take challenges, made me not to fear to maximize opportunities or create opportunities. Courage. If you develop enough courage to confront challenges, to maximize opportunities, to create opportunities, to take some risks, and the courage to be different, the courage to accept that you are crazy, the courage to accept that you are mad, you are motivated, adventurous, aggressive, and determined, mad, M-A-E-D, then you will see that success will come your way. You know, I'm not too normal. I don't behave like the average Nigerian or average African. And I have the courage to be different and to tell you that I don't need to conform to what you expect from me. So courage. Courage to, 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 be, to be yourself and not to conform to the thought processes of people who have not managed their lives well. The next thing you must develop charisma. Find a way to become attractive to people. It's not necessarily your looks. It's not necessarily your dressing alone. Not necessarily your talent. But there is a spirit with which you do things. People will be attracted to you. I was watching uh, Britain has got talent. And I saw that different kinds of talents were made manifest. A man, Tony, came from Japan. And he was um, doing posings post your table, doing poses with only pants. And he was so humorous. And um, he wowed the crowd, just posing with only pants. There was something unique about him. And so, charisma. Every human being is the light of the world. There is something in you. Sometimes religion makes people too monotonous. Religion prevents people from expressing themselves. You will see people who think they are very religious and very holy. They don't behave like me. They carry their faces, straight faces, like mortuary attendants who don't smile. I have the desire to express my life and make myself attractive and pleasing. It might not be from my dressing. It might just be from the content in me. It might just be my sense of humor, my style of presentation, and my rascality and troublesomeness. If you see Kasime, Anne Kasime from, uh, from Uganda. Don't mess up with Anne Kasime. Her English is, her accent is heavy. She is troublesome. She is talkative. But I saw her address people in Canada. I saw her address people in the United States. And she's a global citizen. Anne Kasime from Uganda. If you see MC339, uh, the comedian, he has this particular way of doing his own. If you see uh, MC Aproko King, he has this particular way of doing his own. AY, uh, Godai, and the rest, they have their particular ways of making themselves appealing. There's so much frustration in the world. Don't come and come frustrate people by squeezing your face and becoming an unappealing. So charisma. It's not necessarily the gifts of the Holy Spirit alone. There is a light. There is the light of God in you that people are willing to pay for when it manifests. The next thing is chemistry. The Bible says, can two work together unless they be agreed? Develop the capacity to blend with people, to fuse into the expectation. See, the whole creation is earnestly waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, those who carry the nature and the chromo spiritual chromosome of God. That is to say, people are eager to see you manifest and at the same time relate with you. If you are such that people cannot relate with you, you can't relate with people, their money will not come to you. They will not bring opportunities to you. I can be very harsh and brash, but I learn how to relate with people in such a way that they always want me around them or want me to speak to them or do something with them. So chemistry. The next thing, when you have chemistry, okay, you have capacity, you have competence, you have courage, you have charisma, you have chemistry. 
it will naturally breed connections. In Nigeria, they have a saying, a tree way near tree, now make monkey smart. It is the proximity of trees to each other that the smartness of monkeys are made manifest. If trees are very far apart, monkeys are not too smart. So you need people. There's a saying that your network will determine your net worth. You will definitely need people. Not every person, reasonable people who will multiply you, add to you, not those who will divide you and subtract from you. So I've mentioned six C's, capacity, competence, courage, charisma, chemistry, and connection. Those who don't do well in life, the, the, the pebbles that fall to the bottom when life shakes, they are usually very cynical, very, very cynical. Very, very cynical. I was watching people comment on Mark Zuckerberg about his lifestyle. Oh, some people said he's, uh, maybe it's the cult he belongs to, maybe it's this that he belongs to, maybe it's this, maybe it's grandmaster. Poor people are usually very cynical, very suspicious. They always think, somebody has come to meet me. Doctor, which Bible school did you attend? I never, I've never been to a Bible school. It's the Holy Ghost that has been teaching me. And my service in the church. And listening to my pastors preach. And then independent study of the Word of God. I said, why are you asking me? I said that some people said whether you are a mystic. I said, I'm a mystic. I'm here with you, but I'm seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. You know, they, they are very cynical. Somebody asked me whether the preaching I preach on radio, is it just ordinary um, anointing I'm using to preach it? What is, what is it that I'm saying that is so strange? It's just that I spend time to think, I spend time to meditate, I spend time to read, I spend time to be myself and be alone. I'm not carried away by the crowd. So, people are, poor people are always cynical. Oh, most rich people are corrupt. Most rich men have skeletons in their cupboard. Most rich men, somebody went to block the streets in where my school is. And he was saying, uh, Dr. Pokey, when did you come to Gili? And a pastor, an Assembly of God pastor, that you became rich. How, when did you come to Gili? That you are, are you, and you don't even do miracles. You don't do that. You don't. Did, you, did you join me to go and preach? Why have you not come to meet me, Dr. Pokey? Teach me how to excel in life. I'm doing this conference now. I've announced it in the church I attend. I've announced it on radio. Very few individuals are willing to pay a price to come and learn from us. Surprisingly, a bike rider borrowed 10,000 Naira to come and attend this conference. And people are paying from all over Abuja. But the ones around me who are very critical, never. They, they are very cynical. Then another C, they criticize everything. Criticize everything. When you see somebody who is very critical of any action, he does not take time to analyze. He does not take time to concentrate. He or she does not take time to visualize what the person is doing and learn from it. And so they're always seeing faults. And what you focus on will give you direction. So, because they are very critical, they are very negative. The next thing is crowd thinking. Poor people think alike. Poor people wear the same clothes. Poor people dress the same way. They drive the same car. They go to the, they, they are, they are religion. They just follow religion blindly. No, me, me, I don't. No, 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 no. I'm not a blind Christian. I'm a kingdom citizen. You can't tell me to do some things in my church. I won't join you. Critical, you must, you must analyze issues. You must study the word of God for yourself. You must check where you are coming from. You must check what is in your hand. You must check your vision. Oh, there, there was a time, I don't wear wristwatches, I don't wear rings, I don't wear bangles, I don't wear necklaces. I just like my simple lifestyle. So I don't think like the crowd. When you think like the crowd, you can't wear a crown. It is that distinctive presentation of your thought process that will make you stand out. Somebody once said that if you, are, if you want to be outstanding, if your mates are sleeping, wake up. If they wake up, sit up. If they sit up, stand up. If they stand up, become outstanding. That's the way to, to, to be different. I won't preach like the typical Nigerian pastor. I won't behave like the typical motivational speaker. 
in this house, I don't have any suits. I have ties there that I do not. It's just that this is comfortable for me. This is my style. So the next thing is that they condemn a lot. Apart from criticism, they will just put a label. Uh, let me say this online. A young man saw one of my videos. He said that, uh, doctor, with all your money, why don't you go and whiten your decayed teeth? Does he know the difference between decay and colored dentition? This is, these are the colors of my dentition. I do scaling and polishing twice a year. I spend money to do scaling and polishing twice a year. If his father is presented with me, I look better than his father. And I don't think there's any person like me in his family. And I don't think he can ever be like me, thinking like that. So I reported him to YouTube and they blocked him. You just condemn people. You just, somebody is a harlot, somebody is a thief, somebody is this. No. You will remain small. You will remain poor. You will remain infinitesimal. Then the next thing is that poor people consume too much. They play their music loud. They spend a disproportionate amount of their money for clothing, for fashion, for females, for fermented drink. Don't imitate the rich. It does not make you, does not make you rich. The rich pretend to be poor while the poor pretend to be rich. So poor people spend money. They want to impress people. Why the rich avoid, they, they, they tend to avoid crowd and try to, uh, try, tend to avoid being noticed. The poor wants to overdress, overplay their music, drive speed, and then they eventually crash. Then complain. If you want to be small in life and you want to remain poor, you want to remain a small pebble, complain. The greatest lift in my life came during COVID during the lockdown, when the school was closed, the, my preaching engagements were canceled, and there was nothing to do. The radio station where I preached to about 11 million people every Wednesday was closed, and I went into farming. And in farming, I started doing videos, and it is these videos that have popularized one, increased my finances, exposed me to the global arena. For those of you in South Africa, I'll be coming to Cape Town between the 19th and 27th or 28th of May. So if you're in South Africa, you want, you live around Cape Town, you can come around Cape Town. And if you want me to preach in your church in South Africa, you can also get in contact with me. I will arrange it in such a way that I can stop in your city. Star, Joburg, uh, Pretoria, Bluefontaine, um, Durban, Port Elizabeth, Utineg, and all that. I've been to such places, Peter Marysburg and the Port Elizabeth. I can walk something and visit your church and your people. So try as much as possible to develop the first C's I enumerated and then remove the second C's from your life. Where people are complaining, people are seeing opportunities. The poor man sees forest. The rich man sees real estate. Somebody sent that to me. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles. Uh, poor.